Hello SpaceX friends, we're back with some latest space updates. Today we'll talk about the rollout of the Starship booster for the third time after the Booster 7 installed on the orbital launch mount with the help of launch tower arms. Recently SpaceX has rolled out the Super Heavy Booster 7 to their Starbase orbital launch site for the third time and according to reports they use the gigantic launch tower arms to install the booster on the launch mount. After the booster has been fully secured by 20 clamps in the mount, the SpaceX engineers will connect the booster with the ground systems in the pad. Some sources state that SpaceX can easily go for another round of pre-flight testing of Booster 7 by the 27th of June. On the 31st of March, the Booster 7 had rolled out to the pad for the first time. At that time, B-7 had successfully completed two major cryogenic proof tests. Later, it got severely damaged during a structural stress test. Then the booster had gone through a repair stage for some weeks. After some major repairs, B-7 was again rolled out to the pad for the second time and completed the third cryoproof test successfully. By the 14th of May, B-7 was returned to the Starbase factory. Till the 23rd of June, B-7 remained inside the factory for completion of the additional work on the booster. Booster 7 rolled out to the launch pad for the third time on the 24th of June. SpaceX tweeted, Super Heavy Booster 7 with 33 Raptor engines installed was transported to the orbital launch pad at Starbase. Almost several hours after arrival of Super Heavy B-7 at the orbital launch site, the catch arms of Starship Launch Tower had lifted and installed the rocket onto the launch mount. Though, according to Musk, the robotic arms are dedicated for catching ships or boosters out of mid-air, but presently they're serving the purpose of cranes. The using of arms to lift the booster is an extremely complex choice, but they allow SpaceX teams to lift, install, and remove Starship stages very easily without getting affected from wind conditions. But operations of cranes with such heavy rockets are sensitive to strong wind conditions Thus, using a lower tower is a clear advantage for SpaceX. During the span of six weeks that Booster 7 spent in the factory, SpaceX teams completed installation of aero covers, chines or strakes, massive grid fins, Starlink internet dishes, and also those 33 upgraded Raptor V2 engines. Moreover, SpaceX also finished installing heat shields on Raptor engines. According to reports, it's encouraging to note that what took SpaceX teams almost six months to complete the additional work of Booster 4, they've completed almost the same amount of work on Booster 7 in just six weeks. Booster 4's slow progression may have happened due to SpaceX not taking its testings as objects of priority, but in the case of Booster 7, static fire testing is the topmost priority in 2022. As per SpaceX CEO, Booster 7 will start the static fire tests of B-7 by firing either one or a few of the V-2 Raptor engines. Earlier, SpaceX has never ignited more than six Raptor V-1 engines simultaneously and never tested more than three engines at a time on a Super Heavy booster. So if B-7 heads for a static fire of a greater number of engines, it would be a new achievement for SpaceX. But prior to actual static fire tests, they'll need to carry out a wet dress rehearsal of Booster 7. Now, if SpaceX attempts a wet dress rehearsal, they'll need to fill the booster with almost 3,000 tons of liquid oxygen and liquid methane. So, from these figures, it's clear that the B-7 WDR and static fire test will be a first for Super Heavy and just as big of a test for the orbital launch site. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.